Hello, my name is uh, Jim Henry. I was born and raised here in Anchorage. I live um, about two blocks down the road. My kids go to Grace Christian School and Service High School. A six-year-old back there, fire places, so he was born sick already. He was hoping I did this early. Um, but let me just say that the first thing I think is it's nice that there's a national dialogue going on about this issue. Most of you have read about what's going on with the Catholic Church and their hospitals that are being forced by the Obama administration to provide contraceptions and abortifacients, um, despite the fact that they have a very strong belief system that prevents them from doing that. There's a, a letter, actually yesterday, that the leader of the archbishops across the country sent to President Obama regarding his so-called compromise to allow some form of religious liberty that basically was refused by the archbishops and has been getting widespread support from all different faith-based communities. His letter basically said, true protection for religious liberty, the kind required by the Constitution, requires a broad religious exemption, one that protects any person or institution from being forced to provide services in violation of sincerely held beliefs. Essentially what Proposition 5, if it passes, will do is force residents, businesses, and faith institutions to violate the right of conscience. We've heard in no uncertain terms from those supporting Proposition 5 that you can have any belief system you want. It's just that when you decide to enter the public marketplace, you have to check that at your place of worship. Our belief is that you shouldn't have to check your faith system at the house of worship. Freedom of religion is a first liberty, is how John Adams described it. And it is absolutely essential for democracy to work. What we're seeing now is about 120 of these ordinances that have been either introduced or passed across the country is a true violation of a very burdensome kind for organizations and institutions and individuals that have been forced out of their businesses or forced to close their shops. In the case of Boston, many of you have heard about the Archdiocese, who was in the business of providing adoptions for over 100 years, longer than any other adoption agency in, in Boston. When this sexual orientation ordinance, as, or in this case, same-sex marriage, passed, the Catholic Church had two options. They could either adopt kids out against their deeply held faith tradition to same-sex couples, or they could go out of business. And after 110 years in the adoption business, they chose to go out of business. In my view, I think in a lot of people in Anchorage's view, that wasn't good for Massachusetts. That wasn't good for children in Boston. The question was, and I think everyone should ask, were there gays and lesbians in Massachusetts today that could find dozens of adoption agencies to get kids placed into their homes? And the answer, of course, yes. So it's not a matter of did they have access to that service. It was very specifically that they did not want to tolerate the Catholic Church being able to hold to a deeply held conviction. So it's a very scary thing for a lot of us in Anchorage. Having grown up here, I believe that Anchorage is a very tolerant, very respectful community. Julie O'Malley has called me. She's a lesbian reporter for the Anchorage Daily News. I've quoted her a few times, and I'm going to continue to quote her because it's a letter that she wrote in the Anchorage Daily News in September of 2009 when this ordinance was introduced, was passed by the Assembly, and then vetoed by Mayor Sullivan. She said that she has never, when she has outed herself to the cable guy, to the nano man, to the principal, to anybody in her community, she has seen nothing but respect. It's a quote from the most famous lesbian in Anchorage, Alaska. And I would say she's exactly right. I pride myself on being in a place that's very respectful. This is not about respect. This is about forcing people to violate their deeply held convictions. And I urge you to vote no on Prop 5. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Good evening. My name is Jeffrey Newman. I appreciate the chance. I'm one of the members of campaign leadership team of One Anchorage, yes, and Prop 5. Um, we're uh, at the verge of a very exciting opportunity. 
35 years ago when the uh, municipality was formed by joining the city and borough of Anchorage, we created an equal rights code that protects all of us, all of us equally, from discrimination in housing, employment, financial practices, whether you're black or white, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim, single and married, whatever your race, religion, sex, uh, national origin, physical or mental disability, you can go into a business, you can rent a home, you can get a loan, you can go into a restaurant, you are free from discrimination. We know that's what Hager wants. Um, unfortunately, although sexual preference was originally included in that initial equal rights code, it was taken out. And for 35 years, most Hager residents have wanted it back. So what happened? This year, a former governor, Democrat Governor Tony Knowles, and former Republican State Senator Arlis Sturzelewski got together and they sponsored the One Language Initiative. They were joined by Wanda Green, the president of the NAACP of Anchorage. They were joined by Vince Beltrami, the head of the AFL-CIO. They were joined by uh, Eric Britton, former chair of the Anchorage and Alaska Chambers of Commerce. They were joined by three bank ministers. They were joined by a wide spectrum of people who said, we are ready for an Anchorage where everyone, all of us are treated equally. What does Prop 5, the One Anchorage Initiative do? It does one thing and one thing only. Provides the same legal protections to all of us, including gay and transgender Alaskans. We are incredibly pleased that there are over 45 faith leaders, a part of Christians for Equality, who have come out in support of this initiative. We're very pleased that just today, the Episcopal Bishop of the entire Diocese of Alaska has written a letter in support of the One Anchorage Initiative. All of your community members, uh, all of your leaders, all of your elected officials, including five former mayors, uh, Senator Beckett, uh, Mayor Clayman, Mayor Jack Roderick, and Republican Mayor uh, Rick Meistrom have all come out and endorsed this initiative. Um, this is about making one community. We in Anchorage, we in Alaska have a very simple idea. If you work hard and you play by the rules, you get treated the same as everybody else. And that's what one Anchorage does. Um, I think it is what I would like to do is really open it up to questions from the floor because I want to make sure that everything's very clear. We know that most Anchorage residents want this to pass. What I'm asking of you is please go to vote. If this is a low turnout election. If people don't go to the polls, we might not get what we've tried to get for 35 years. So let me just open up to questions. Um, I just wanted to uh, address Mr. Minnery. Um, I believe that Julio O'Malley demanded that you remove the, the um, references to her off of her website because the way that you're portraying it is as if she was speaking for the experiences of all gays and lesbians in um, Alaska where she was only speaking for herself and we all know who her mom is so she is very progressive yeah but anyway that yes I will answer. I did speak with Julie O'Malley after this uh, reference came out on the opposition website, and she said she was very upset to be misquoted and misrepresented, and I believe she did contact Ms. Murray. And my understanding is that our, our reference was taken down from the website. She is very clear. She understood there is discrimination. Uh, when this was presented to the Assembly in 2009, two reports in the 1980s, one in 10 and identity reports, were provided to every Assembly member that outlined numerous instances of discrimination. In addition, in 2011, a survey was done that said discrimination continues. Is it widespread? Does it happen every day? No. But there are people who have been kicked out of their apartments. There have been people who have been fired from jobs. And our thought is, how much discrimination is too much? We think in Anchorage, we don't tell any black person that it's okay for one business to say we don't serve you here. We don't think it's okay for any Catholic person to say we don't let Protestants into our restaurant. We don't think it's okay for anybody to say, we don't want disabled people coming into our uh, bank. We think that in Anchorage, we treat everyone equally. And we have comments on that April 3rd, the majority of Anchorage residents will get the opportunity to say, we think the same thing. And we're very hopeful that you would sign up to help us. Uh, on the back, there are brochures on One Anchorage. Please call us if you have questions, www.oneanchorage.com, all spelled out. One Anchorage, yes, I'm five. Well, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Miller, Mr. Minnery. That is uh, Proposition Number Five, Equal Rights.